The Spirit is looking for those who are willing to step out. When did Pentecost come? It came on Pentecost. Well, that makes sense. Pentecost was a celebration. When does the Spirit come? The Spirit comes in celebration of God, in praise of God. We're going to get more of that. You see, the, the Spirit comes. Actually, what were the apostles doing? What does it say they were doing? They were together, all together with one purpose, in prayer. Crucial prayer. You know, prayer is the greatest blessing and honor we have that we can talk to God, that we can be in His presence. And we, we, it should not be taken as a drudgery. The Spirit fell specifically, not when they were together in one accord watching television. Not when they were together plugged into their iPhones, iPads, internet. You know, for many that's a problem. I'm not saying it's all wrong, of course not, but what I am saying is that you're so plugged in, but you have to all these things in the world that how can you be plugged into God? They were unplugged. They were unplugged to the world that day or those days, but they were plugged into God. And how do you expect the blessings of God to come into your life if you're not plugged in? Or vision. You know, so many times in the Bible, the visions, when things happen, it happens when people are in prayer or when people are in worship. You know, and you know, it, things happen. Visions come to the prophets. Even visions came to Paul. You know, because they're in his prayer. Well, how do you expect to see the great things of God if you're not in with him? It show, and it shows you the other side of prayer, that most people, you know, think of prayer as we're speaking to God, and that's only part of it, because the other part is God moving on you, and God changing you, and God imparting to you. So you need to be in God's presence even just for that. In fact, it's usually more important than what you have to say to God, is what God has to say to you, and what God has to do with you. And he'll do things, and some things you may not even know, what you may not even realize how he's doing it. But when you're in his presence, he's doing it. <clears throat> when Rogerio was here <clears throat> from Brazil, <clears throat> he who has this very, very accurate gift, he said, God is going to lift up this place. He's gonna, it's going to be known. And it's, gonna, it's, and it's happening now. God is going to touch, he's going to use this place to touch, to touch this land. He says, but you have to be in prayer. You have to be like the disciples on Pentecost who are in prayer and supplication. You have to be, because the magnitude of the calling is great. So you have to, you have to, you have to, has to be matched by being in the presence of God. Remember, you know, the ministers, the, the priests, the Kohanim, Aaron's sons, were given the great ministry of God, but they were also given access to be in the presence of God. It goes together. The calling and the presence. You need them. One has to match the other. And without it, something's going to be out of whack. And it's not only prayer and supplication. Because the Greek word here for prayer also means worship. And worship is key here in Luke 24, verse 52. It says they went back to Jerusalem. after the, the, It says that they were continually worshiping, praising God. They were praising God. And it is not only prayer saying, Lord, do this or I need this and that's all right, that's fine. But it's also praising God, worshiping God. Then it's, sometimes it's not only that you have to say, okay, do this, or I want, I want this gift. It's, I want to praise you. Those who are truly most filled with the Holy Spirit are those who most truly praise God in everything. And I don't just mean praise Him here or praise Him with a loud voice. That's fine. But I mean that everything in their life, they're praising God. God inhabits the praises of His people. So you, if you are a person who complains, God does not inhabit the complaints of his people. He vanishes. He flees it. So your complaints are empty of God. But God inhabits the praises of his people. Get into the habit of praising. Get into the habit of praising him in all things. And you will be inhabited. But if you're a person of praise, if God inhabits the praise of his people, if you're a person of praise... He's going to inhabit you more the more you praise him in everything. Paul praises God, and what happens? He praises God when he shouldn't praise God, or rather, when it, there's no reason to praise God. He's in chains in prison, and he praises God, and what happens? The, an earthquake happens, and the prison breaks open. 
Praise is powerful. When the priests of God were praising God, it's that the glory of God came down and filled the temple or filled the, filled the place of God. Learn the practice of praise. Because, start ridding complaint out of your life and start practicing praise in all things. There's always a reason to give thanks to God. You may not see it, but there's always a reason. Even if you don't see it, Lord, I don't even see it, but I know this is going to be for my good, so I praise you. Praise him. They were continually worshiping, Luke 24, for they're continually worshiping God and praising him. The spirit-filled life is a life of praise, a life of thanksgiving. The word Jew, Yehuda, means one who praises God. If you are born again, you're a spiritual Jewish, spiritual Israelite. You are a praiser of God. That's what identifies you. Are you doing that? Because that's who you are. He inhabits, he praises God, will bless the one who praises. Because God likes praise. He doesn't like complaints. Notice something else about the disciples.